Hello and welcome to In The North Live, your podcast brought to you weekly by Basketball Queensland. I'm Brianna Goodchild and I'm going to add my fabulous co-host, John Guana. Guys, it's been a week of me not being involved because of a certain show. I can now officially say what it is, Survivor. You might have seen me on it. And look, it's great that I'm here back doing what I love, things I love like basketball, chatting basketball, going through all the greatest things. So John's joining in and it's great to see we've got a number of people on the podcast tonight. A lot of people I'm excited to um, chat to as well. Of course, Maddie Garrick. We've got um, Harry Froling joining us as well. So make sure you send in any questions you have because we can definitely go through those as they enter the podcast. Great to see people popping up. Here we go. Do we have a John Guana? Few questions coming in. How can I join Basketball Queensland? Make sure you just go check it out on the socials. You'll be able to find out information there and it's all about signing up with a club. All righty, John. John, you're in. You left me hanging there for a moment. I I made it. Um, so uh, technologically challenged. It's not even funny. I get. I'm like that television that you see that it kind of freezes. So you touch every button, and before you know it, you've kicked yourself out. So, but I'm here. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm like, I have to accept you eight times. But look, that's it. We're here now. It's an exciting yeah. podcast ahead tonight. Yeah. Very exciting to chat with our guests. I'm really excited to chat with our guests. But I'm really excited to have you back, Brianna. Too. It's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> Uh, it's been an eventful couple of weeks for you. Uh, we're just happy, and I know everyone in, in uh, the chat is really happy to have you back. How, how are you? How are you doing? Let's let's start off with that question. How are you going after being in the outback? Well, I tell you what, it was a little bit like having my heart dashed against the rocks of despair, getting voted off early. Definitely not what I was wanting, but it was a lot of good fun. Part of the thing you don't see is just how much you actually have to survive. Like the other tribe didn't eat for three days. They glossed over that fact. Um, you're literally sleeping on dirt, freezing to death at night. There's a lot going on. It's really hot out there and you're fully just in the elements all day long. So that part of it kind of gets lost in all the social dynamics, I feel. But it was really fun. Like it was a dream of mine just to go out there and compete. And I think a few athletes might relate to, you know, Coming out with white line fever, maybe a little too hard. Maybe I had a few, you know, um, first quarter nerves and uh, it got me. But, hey, maybe I'll get on again. Hey, that's right. It's, uh, it certainly has happened in the past where we see guests uh, and previous contestants come back. So you never know. And I know tonight's episode, we have a couple of Survivor Connections. Uh, one of our guests, Harry Froling, is he known for his own white line fever? But I've been having a chat and he said to me that he reckons he could take out the Survivor crown. Does he? Well, speaking of Survivor, we've got Maddie Garrick. Maddie, thanks so much for joining us. Hello. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you. The connection being that Maddie's partner, Sophie, is still in the mix on Survivor. How are you finding watching it, Maddie? Well, I am... Um... It's actually on at the moment. So I'm missing the, the last bit. Tribal Council is coming up, the most intense part, other than the challenges. So I had to drive back to Bendigo, and I've, because I've been watching it keenly, I've um, been posting on my Instagram my <laughs> reactions to it, and people are like, where are you? What are you doing? Um, but, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Like, obviously, his stories from Sophie when she came back um, from being out on Survivor, and it's just amazing what all those contestants are going through, and you don't even see, like you would know, you don't see – even like you know you just see a glimpse of it so um it's really um it's really cool to kind of watch it back and yeah yeah exactly and that's it i sort of you know you don't go in there with your best self you go in with your sleep deprived hungry mm -hmm. um paranoid self and i think that's really <laughs> important for everyone to remember it's it's a lot easier said than done yeah absolutely as i said i've just heard stories and then seeing it and she's like oh my god you know what this happened but this and that, that's the whole thing like everyone is running off no sleep no little of each 
and just to be able to produce all of that and to, yeah, just do that. It's amazing. Amazing what you can do. Patty, I, I, I wanted to know after watching it and hearing about the experience, do you think it might be something that you could potentially do or maybe have any more interest possibly in doing it? I just cut out a little bit. Were you saying would I would do it? Would you, would yeah. You? <laughs> Look, I wouldn't be opposed to it um, at all. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, Sophie went on there to, for something to really challenge her. And I'm all about doing those experiences too, whether it's in basketball or it's in life, whatever it is. So if it's something that's going to challenge me and really put me out of my comfort zone and learn something different and push myself, then yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not opposed to it. I'm like country girl growing up too. So maybe I'll have a, a couple of tricks up my sleeve if I did, but I don't think anything like, um, I'm sure Brie, you can um, speak for this, but you, you just can't, nothing can prepare you for the real thing. Exactly. I think it's a little bit lack of the draw. But, you know, speaking of country girl, you know, grew up in rural Victoria. Can you talk us a little bit about how you got into basketball and leading up to playing professionally? Uh, well, you know what? It's not really much of an um, interesting story. But basically, I've got two older brothers. Um, I absolutely idolised them just because they were older, they were cool. Um, so basically, I thought I was a boy when I was younger because I wanted to be uh, one of them. And mum and dad just put them into an after school competition for, you know, to socialize and be active and try a different sport. And I obviously had to start playing basketball after that. So, but I was a kid, I, I loved, um, I loved playing sport. I love being outdoors. And I think, you know, Shepparton's really good with um, mm. the grassroots of sports there. There's so many sports and there's actually quite a bit of um, sporting talent across different codes um, that have come out of, um, you know, the Golden Valley as well. So that's, you know, that's kind of basically it. I, I basically grew up playing netball um, and doing little athletics. And then I started playing when I was 11. So speaking with mm -hmm. my kids, I started a little bit later than what most people did. But um, that's, that's it. Rest is history. Really. Yeah. But definitely, you, you may have started a little bit later, but you were into the scene really early. I believe um, you were 17 when you first signed with Bendigo Spirit. Is that right? I think so. That feels like a world away like ages ago so something like that yeah 16 or 17 and um being Shep a Shep girl that was the closest national club which is really good to have a national program in regional um or just regional in general but regional Victoria um yeah. and yeah so on top of that I was traveling uh twice a week to Melbourne uh for great competition in the VJBL um so it was kind uh -huh. of like no you've got to play uh, in the VJBL or a different or higher standard league if you really wanted to go somewhere with basketball. So that was Friday and Sunday. Um, and then on the weekends were filled with state basketball camps or tryouts or what was called ITC program back then. And um, mm -hmm. so basically every weekend was filled with traveling around somewhere in Victoria or even Australia to play basketball. And then during the week on Tuesday, Thursdays, generally I was traveling back and forth from Bendigo. So there's not enough, um, yeah, not enough words to kind of thank my parents for how much time and effort and obviously financially they supported me um, because I, yeah, wouldn't be here talking to you guys about my journey if it wasn't for their commitment to do that. That's so lovely. It's true. Love like take a village. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'd like to know where along the journey in basketball that you fell in love with the game and what – you or, or what helped you drive you to where you've come uh, in your professional career? I honestly think it was pretty close to my first game. There was just something about oh. basketball and it had, this has nothing to do with any other sports or netball or whatever. It was just something about the game itself and the people that played basketball I was just drawn to. And that just might be a personal thing. Um, for me, it might be different for someone else, but it was just like I connected so much better with basketball, the basketball mm -hmm. community. Um, and I think just because the sport, like I'm, I'm, I could never play an individual sport. Like I just love playing with others and helping others and trying to succeed with other players. Um, and yeah, there was just something about basketball that really drew me to that, whether it's the people or the, even just the nature of the game. Um, everyone's involved at the one time. 
I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just um, I just fell in love with it straight away. Knew nothing about basketball. I didn't even know who Michael Jordan was when I first started playing. Uh, <laughs> pretended I knew, but I didn't. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know. I just it was early on, and then when I was fifteen, I kind of had to make the decision: was I going to play? professional or state netball or basketball and I just as I said was drawn to the basketball side all right we're welcoming Harry as well again with the glitches it's locked us out from having four people at one point but Harry's here too maybe a little bit of a internet connection but while we wait for that Maddie continuing with you (laughs) um going on also about your love for it do you think that's what helped you get to the point where you could play for Australia including you know and three by three of course yes no absolutely and going into the 3x3 side too it's it's completely it's almost like it's a different sport um within the same sport if that kind of makes sense it's um i mean for those who don't know it's half court it's faster it's more physical but the skills required required to play 3x3 are kind of more your one-on-one street ball style so I feel like you do have to have a niche to be able to play through X3. I don't think everyone can play it. Uh, I, everyone can play it, but the you have to have a niche to be able to play it at a high level, I think. Um, and, yeah, fundamentally the skills are all the same, but it's, um, it's just completely different. Um, and absolutely it's because I love basketball so much and um, through X3 is really suited to the game style that I play. Um, and the way that I am, um, yeah. Yeah, and what do you think that key was for getting gold specifically? Just like the faster play or thinking more on your feet or having plays that are like set, ready to run? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, because there's so many differences between the, the two. Um, obviously, five on five, played that my whole life and that's what my dream's always been. And I, I love the, the fact that there's so many things that you can do in the full court and the half court, um, getting out and running the lanes. Is, I, I love doing that when I don't feel so old, which is funny to say, <laughs> 29 years old. Um, but then 3x3, you're just like, you're just going. You're just, there's no time to think about the shots that's missed or a mistake you've made. It's literally just go, 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 um, think on your feet, just play, re- read and react. And it's more like you feel the game. Um, and I really like that side to be able to, I wouldn't say it's more show pony, but you're able to have that freedom as well. Yeah. Almost more responsive. Yes. Now, yeah, Harry, absolutely. you've been getting a bit of chat on the line saying pay for your Wi-Fi, fix the go- <laughs> the dongle, et cetera. But you're here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I was always going to bring the peanut gallery with me, so expect that <laughs> to go on throughout the uh... – <laughs> I mean, it's only fair. You've been quite active in our chats, all the other pods, so I'm expecting a good bit of banter to follow. Yeah, no, I think the boys will tune in and throw a bit of chat around, so we'll see how they go. It's uh, it's only a fair game, Harry. We were talking before you joined us about uh, White Line Fever and Survivor. You and I were chatting oh. around. Take it out. What what makes it makes you think that you could win Survivor? I think I'd be uh, – I was sort of talking to Sam about this a little bit. I'd be hit or miss with it. He thinks I'd be a bit too much of a hero in Survivor, and I'd just go out and <laughs> fight. I'd tell too many people yeah. off. So oh, I'd probably Harry, be... I can relate. I can relate. Yeah, so he's much better than me at this point. Cool. Pretty quick, but I'm a pretty good talker, and I reckon I could uh, weasel my way around a little bit. So um, I reckon I'd, I'd do all right. You, you all right. Well, once you retire, question yeah. mark? Maybe. I would. I'd love it. North, North Queensland boy, though, you'd be able, you'd certainly be able to handle the heat, at least, Harry. Tell me that. Yeah, no, we'd be eating good in camp, too. I'm a hunter gatherer, so it's all good. You can live, how to live off the land? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Got it covered. <laughs> hey, H- Harry, we were talking to Maddie about playing three on basketball. Have you ever had a go at it? It, it seems more of a, of a guard kind of, you know, small forward wing kind of game. Have you ever played three on three? Yeah, I did. Uh, when we sort of first started in Australia, I did it and played with PC, Lucas Walker and Jeremy Kendall, and we had a good little squad. Good team. Um, and they played it sort of in the off-season. And um, I've actually, breaking news here, but I've actually been talking to the three-on-three guy a little bit, so I think I might be going to a camp possibly in the off-season. We'll see what happens with all that and what happens with my NBL stuff. But um, obviously, NBL and Boomer stuff comes first for me right now, and 
um, see what happens from there. But um, I'm definitely looking at it and enjoy playing it. It's a fun game. There you go, John. A bit more breaking news here on In the North. Thank you for that, Harry. I owe you. Uh, I'll be checks in the mail. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> hey, look, um, let's chat a little bit about the season. Is that what you're going to say, John? But please go, Brianna. Please, yeah. <laughs> So look, it was a pretty rough ten for the uh, rough round ten for the Illawarra Hawks. So can you talk us through what you're focusing on coming out of that round? Yeah, I mean we had today off. We just had some uh, team stuff today, but um, it's a tough, tough one. You know, we've dropped a few games. I think we're one for three in the last couple games, and um, we haven't really beaten any of the top teams yet. So um, it's been difficult for us, and we're still figuring it out along the way. But I think it's just the little things for us playing hard. Um, physicality and the effort stuff, the small things. So um, we're not covering those basic things that give us a chance to win right now. And then um, obviously you can get into the finer details and X's and O's, but um, we're trying to fix it. And obviously we've got to do it quick because we're nearly halfway through the season now, I think. And um, I think we're six and six. So there's a couple, a lot of teams sitting around that fourth to sixth mark and um, mm -hmm. yeah, we get to switch on. Yeah. I think we've got you um, currently fifth on the ladder. So, you know, exactly. We're at round, heading into round 11 with 21 rounds, so getting to business end. Yeah, exactly. So, How, How's the group, though, Harry? You guys have so much talent, and coming into the season, you know, there are a lot of people who are picking the Hawks uh, to win the championship. I know the group has championship aspirations, um, but a lot of new faces. Where do you guys feel like you're at? Do you still feel like you have a lot more room to grow? Yeah, we do. Um, I mean, we haven't figured it out yet as a team. And I think the positive thing is, like, the adversity we've been through, like, we're all such a tight team and it's pretty rare for that. Even the imports, like, we're all pretty cohesive and get along and everyone's sort of working through it together. Whereas sort of teams in the past I've had, when you hit the adversity, you splinter a lot. So um, that's a good thing. Obviously, we need to figure it out. But, um, yeah, I think we're, we're positive and we're building in the right direction. We just got to um, get it together because we've got one heck of a team. And look, turning our attention back to the WNBL as well, um, for you, Maddie, Bendigo Spirit, um, you know, had a few, had a long losing streak there, but you had a great round 10 taking out that win against the Lightning. I think that really has set you guys up for an exciting round 11 ahead. And of course, round 10 is not even over yet because we've got another game for you guys in that round on the 12th. Can you talk me through a little bit about how the team's feeling? What was the big difference in that game? I mean, I was watching it, and to quote the commentators, you were feeling it. You had a great game straight from the get-go from the first quarter, 17 points, um, seven rebounds to assist. So, please, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself in that game and how the team's feeling moving forward. Yeah, I think for us, like, there's been probably definitely one game, maybe two, um, that were complete blowouts. But we're a really young side. Um, we obviously... Um, don't have Leil Leilani Mitchell, um, so she yeah. uh, is out, uh, which is, I mean, great for her, what's happening in her life, but um, obviously a big signing for us uh, and a team built around that. Um, so other, having her out um, makes our team a lot younger. So in saying the the two games that were, that were big blowouts, the rest have kind of been pretty close like they've been they've been grind games um and probably lost within you know 10 points so not like a i guess the win loss record isn't completely reflective of how our season has been um we obviously yeah. have been lacking in some areas um but so i think it was really good for us to be able to get that win we knew that a, a few of their best plays were out obviously away with the opal squad so yeah. we really gave it our all to be able to to um snatch that one um but we're just a team we just fight we we're quick we're young but we just fight and we never give up um which is i think it's just so great and it was just a reminder to us if we play like we do with that then we can do you know great things and be successful so I, I wanted to ask both of you because you both have been around the game of basketball for a long time uh, and basketball at the moment in Australia is riding a real high. Uh, where mm -hmm. have growth in, in the game in, uh, in Australia over the last few years? And Harry, I'll, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think uh, probably the biggest thing I've noticed is like the grassroots, just the kids, like you see guys run around in NBL jerseys, WNBL jerseys, NBA jerseys, like, and just the, I guess, the community aspect of it. I don't think 
when I was a bit younger, there wasn't as much. Obviously, we had the Crocs and they were somewhat engaged. But now you just see all these NBL teams and how involved they are with the community and um, like a lot of the newer clubs as well, like how they've realised the grassroots and the building from the ground up is huge because in this league to be a good NBL team, you've got to have good local guys, you know. So um, you obviously got to get your imports right too. But um, I think that's been a huge aspect. And you're seeing these kids that go to college and, you know, back in the day probably fizzle out and don't come back and just end up going into other jobs. But now they're going over and there's way more opportunities for more college kids to come back and guys who go fresh out of high school. So I think that's probably been the biggest difference I've seen. And, and how about for you, Maddie? Oh, I completely agree with that. And I think also, like, have you seen the next generation or the next <laughs> generation coming through? Like, they are the athletic talent and the gifts that these, the next generation have is, like, scary. But in saying that, like, going back to Harry's point, the grassroots, but the level of coaching, the level of, you know, sports science and recovery and loading and stuff like that is just so, so different. Um, and so advanced now, um, which is so good, and put that all together. Um, and the game's changing too; it's faster. I, well, I was speaking from obviously the WNBL, but obviously watching the NBL too, with the amount of talent that's coming through, it's faster, it's more athletic, it's more physical. Um, and I just, I just think it's going to keep growing and growing. Yeah, we've got people in text line saying, "Love your work, Mads." Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> So that's great to hear about all that with how, yeah, it is growing. And so one of our favorite um, followers of the podcast has a question that she was wanting to ask, which might sort of play off the back of this one. And it was, this is from Ellie Keelis, 17. She was asking, what's your favorite part about each perspective, you know, code, WMBL? Maddie, what's your favorite part about it? Oh, I think that uh, one thing that I really enjoy um, at the moment and I love is the traction that it's getting now too. You can see the growth mm -hmm. of the, the next gen or, you know, the, the next stars and stuff, but it's been around for so long and, and I feel like there's still a long, long way to go um, in terms of the exposure and, you know, the thought around women's basketball and all that sort of stuff. But, the talent that's coming through, like we're having more WNBA players come in. We've got people coming in from Europe um, because it is like building that traction around the world, how good it is. And people love playing here. It's competitive. I just, you know, I wanted to keep growing as well um, because it is the best league that we have here in Australia. And one of the best, we say, I guess, off season leagues for, for the main leagues, mm -hmm. like, the WNBA in the world. And that's why we have world-class players coming in. So that obviously brings up the talent. Um, the Australian born talent here can only get better with that um, and being pushed in that sense. So um, it's good to see that's growing, but it, it still has a long way to go in terms of the, you know, the other side of things, but um, that's probably my favorite. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to agree. It's so exciting week to week to just see how dynamic the league has become. I mean, upsets, like you guys taking out the lightning, you know, that's just kind of the bread and butter of the um, league these days, which is so exciting. So, Harry, over to you. Favourite part, NBL, go. Yeah, so I'm getting harassed. I'm getting all the boys are trying to phone call me and prank me a little bit. So, <laughs> um, peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah, um, can you just do that question again real quick? I've yeah, out. so it's just about what your favourite part is of NBL. Oh, general. I mean, yeah, obviously getting to play with my brother is pretty special. Um, you know, just the teammates you meet, the guys you meet, you know, like, to have someone like Emmett Nah just is always an idol for me growing up, watching him at St. Mary's and um, the amount of assists, you know, leading the country in assists, play with a guy like that's just special. And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just playing in front of family and friends, like it's cool to be in Australia where mum and dad can come to the games and, you know, Alicia came and said hello to us the other day, hung out with us. So um, just everyone's sort of being around each other and, um, just yeah, that's what I love about NBL. You just get to do it in your home country. It's a good place to live. I obviously went to Europe for a little bit, and that was pretty miserable. So um, if you can make a decent living over here and be in Australia, um, it's pretty special. Obviously, the NBA would also be special. Yeah, is that that still a goal of yours, Harry, to get to the NBA? Yeah, it is. But obviously, I'm working just working on my NBL stuff right now and building on this year, and um, hopefully have a continue to build on what I've done so far and. Um, as a team, hopefully we can do something special and then um, I'll work it out from there. Now, you mentioned Emmett Nahr in particular, so I'm going to ask both of you this. 
Um, can you give us one of your favorite teammates? It could be a current teammate or someone you've played with in the past. Uh, Harry, you mentioned Emmett. Is he up in the top two or three, maybe? Yeah, I'd give him top five. Probably not top two or three. Um, oh, fair enough. He, just, okay. he only dropped out. Of, he dropped out of top three because he's been harassing me on the phone <laughs> tonight. But um, yeah, top teammates. Ooh. I don't know, that's a tough one. I've had a lot of good teammates uh, in my times. Um, I put it I on a pretty easy. Brendan Tees and Kev White, probably two of the best I've had. Um, on, and Dan Seth? Greeter would be up there. What about Sam? Yeah, well, Sam's my brother, so I don't really count that. He's my... I mean, uh, come on, I put, my... It, I put it right out there for you. No, nah, he thinks he's the golden child, so he uh, he gets all the love he needs from these guys here. Uh, <laughs> A lot. How about you, Maddie? Any one of your teammates, either current or in the past, really stand out to you as a teammate that you really cherish playing with? Uh, I've played with a lot of amazing people. I've been, you know, fortunate enough to play with Olympians, um, imports, WNBA, like stars and everything. Um, no, I will give a shout out. She's also my housemate at the moment to Annalie Maley. She is just having an incredible season. And she's one of those players at the moment that you want on your team. <laughs> you don't want to go. Sure. Is just, yeah, killing it at the moment. So I give a shout out to um, my girl, Maylee. Yeah, yeah, she's been doing so well. It was really exciting to see how many points she got in that game against uh, the Lightning. I mean, you guys really unleashed. So it was very good to watch now look i want to take it back to i mean possibly john one of john's and mine's favorite leagues mbl one harry you came in played for the meteors uh makai meteors and did some damage there it was great to see you really dominating the boards of course buckets as well and you helped get that team you know along with all the other fantastic players to the final series um are you coming back? Are we going to see you again? And will you bring Sam to actually play on the same team as you this time instead of Townsville? Yeah, I mean, obviously I had a good time in Mackay. That was a fun off-season just with all my stuff I do off the court and getting out fishing and all that. But um, that was a fun team to play with. I mean, um, we won the finals as well without me because I uh, had to come back here early. But um, I'm not – I will not be back in Mackay next season i'll tell you that much okay. i probably won't be in nbl1 north it's looking like it's going to be nbl1 south oh whoa can we do a switch then? breaking news huh? what was that i oh, know we're getting all the breaking news tonight everyone yeah. rewatch this one what else can you tell us harry yeah come on it's all the bit oh uh, i can't it's it's not 100 percent official yet but we'll see look out <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you this. There's, it's, a, it's a place where there's NBL team. Okay. Ooh, all right, all right. We can, we can use this. I'm thinking Melbourne maybe. Now, um, we'll see. Or maybe Sydney. Uh, so, Matt, on that note as well, um, are you playing NBL 1? And would you ever consider taking a trip up north? Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm very open to, to anything. I've had a few offers already come through. And for me, like, honestly, I haven't really thought about it too much um already it's just been kind of getting to bendigo obviously my my first season back here um yeah trying to get over some niggling injuries and stuff like that and just get through the season and really make the most of this and um yeah the next focus uh as well will be to hopefully you know get in the com games team for the 3x3 and stuff like that so to be honest i actually haven't thought too much about nbl1 um I did sign late last year, just depending on a few things as well. But, um, yeah, I, I'm really not opposed to kind of playing anywhere for the NBL one. Okay. Again, you've heard it here, coaches in the chat listening. <laughs> We've opened to the idea, so go hard. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you a question because I had a look on your Instagram stories and I couldn't tell if that was a dog or a cow that you have. Can you tell me about the dog in your Instagram stories? That might be one of the biggest animals I've ever seen in my life. Is that me? Yes. Oh, you sorry. Been... Just cut out a little bit. It's, uh, it's um, yeah, story. one of our, uh, I guess, family or one of Sof's family's uh, dog. I'm pretty sure it's a bull mastiff. I'm not sure. He is huge. 
Um, but there's the biggest softy you'll ever come across. Um, loves a cuddle, isn't opposed to a cuddle and just wants all the attention. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he was loving Survivor last night, although, um, yeah, it was a little bit emotionally drained by, by the end of it. So yeah, we had all the cuddles afterwards, but it's uh, no cow, just a dog. A little bit of a <laughs> support dog last night, at least. Absolutely. I feel like I was his support person um, as well. So it worked out perfectly. And you can't Harry, help but get emotionally invested. <laughs> in the being uh, an outdoorsman, tell us what an ideal day off away from basketball is for you. Was that for me? For you, yeah. I, I, I think so, yeah. I, I must yeah. agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, day off. I mean, there's not really that much. You go to the beach and stuff down in the gong. There's not that much to do, but ideally it's for me fishing and spear fishing a lot so um in the off seasons i try to do that and up at the reef and um i've gotten pretty good at that sam's actually really average at it and he he's, he's probably one of the worst spear fishermen i've ever seen in my life but um i've been teaching him and that's one of the just, just teaching him and i've been teaching the boys a little bit you know dan greeter and isaac white teaching them how to spear fish so we've tried down here a little bit and it's just a bit more big great whites around here so it's a little more scary <laughs> yeah, it definitely sounds it. And look, just a quick question that's come in. Favorite NBA player coming from the chat line? Uh, probably LeBron James. I don't, I don't really have yeah, I don't really have too many. I don't really watch NBA that much to be honest, but LeBron's gotta be out there. And what I about like, you, Maddie? I'm, I'm NBA? a Curry fan in a Kyrie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love it. All right, well we're wrapping up. Uh, time because we've had you here for so long. John, any last questions you want to shoot in? Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for putting up with my crappy internet uh, tonight. <laughs> uh, apologies for all of the delays getting you in there, Harry. Uh, and I also want to wish you guys all the best for the we before you guys. Thank you so much. For, really appreciate it. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. The, go the, the dogs are calling me. They said it's time. <laughs> You're a free woman, Maddie. Thank you so much for your time. And look, good luck in continuing round 10 for you, Maddie, and um, heading into round 11 for you, Harry. So very exciting weeks ahead. I can't wait to watch all the action unfold. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See, if you're free to leave the chat, we'll keep going. Just hang up on us. <laughs> I don't know what oh, happened good. tonight. I had my internet. I know. Here's Gosh, it's been the night of... Mysterious glitches, but you know we we're um we're thinkers. We think on our feet. We get it done. I missed all John, the chat. You... Oh, I, the chat froze up on me. I couldn't see all all the people asking questions and giving Harry crap. I really wanted to get into that as well. But oh, uh... actually, the best part of this whole podcast. But anyway, moving back to business for our final moments. Um, MBL One North. I've spotted a few more signings, so I'm going to run through them, and you can just give me your initial thoughts on them. So, look, a couple exciting ones. Um, returning players is what we're seeing a lot of at the moment. I think it's a season where we're seeing a lot of people re-sign, and maybe some of the you know, big surprising drops will happen a little bit closer to the day. But Ash Taylor back at Logan. Similarly, Shavana Palvast also coming back. So that's really exciting because they were in that premiership winning team. Um, I think Logan likes to keep the same strong body, you know, keep the core strong. And I think it's going to be very exciting to see them come off a win and head into this next NBL1 season. Oh, Any thoughts on that, John? I mean, for sure, Ash Taylor and... Um... Chevy Palvest were two huge parts of the championship winning team and super talented group. They're definitely looking mm -hmm. to keep that core together and they're looking to make another title run and bringing back Taya and uh, Palvest is a big step in that direction. Certainly is. Also, we have Georgia Rouse signed for Ipswich Force and moving to Mackay, Sky Rees for the Meteorettes. But looking at the Mackay Meteors, Filiami for Ketty, Kai Medhurst, and Sam Horton. They're the ones coming back. So very exciting. Yeah, really exciting. A couple of uh, big key players again for Mackay coming back. Uh, Georgia Ralph is one of my favorite players. She can uh, really heat it up on the court. Uh, I think she probably would look back and say she didn't have her greatest season last year. So I expect her to come back with a vengeance. And Ipswich is putting together mm -hmm. an and, you know, Makai always has a target on their back. 
Uh, they brought back Billy Fichetti, who was a huge part of their championship group. Medhurst was great. And he had a great grand final series as well. Mm. So I'll be expecting to take another step up uh, in that th- in the same direction. So a couple of good signings for the Meteors as well. Definitely. And I think to finish off our pod, John, when are you going on Survivor? It seems like, you know, we're going to get the whole basketball community there eventually. I, I could guarantee you this. You will never, ever see me on Survivor. Uh, and if I was, I would probably be the first person voted out. Um, you know, I, I think I've told you this off, off air, but I'll tell everyone in front of uh, everyone here watching. Uh, I admire you for doing it, for chasing your dreams. Uh, I know you get to see a really small snippet of what actually happens out there. And uh, I admire you for doing what you do. I admire everyone who participates in the show because it's not easy. It's a lot of fun, I'm sure, uh, but it's a lot more challenging than what we see in those hour, hour and a half episodes. So uh, you definitely will never see me. My brother in the States would love to do it. And I, I'm going to connect you too so you could give him a tip on maybe helping yeah, him. Yeah. Oh, thanks, John. That means a lot. And yeah. True words, but uh, you know, maybe I have to go on uh, American Survivor. Too much spunk for the Australian version, maybe. <laughs> anyway, that's wrapping up tonight for us. Um, it's been great. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us on the podcast. It's been awesome, super great. If you missed anything, definitely go back and watch it. Great chats with Maddie, with Harry as well. And of course, we're going to see you next week as we always do. So please send any questions or any guests you'd love to have on in ahead of time. We can watch that and definitely get to work on it. So, John, thank you so much for joining us. It's been another great night. Thank you. It's always good. Tuesday night's my favorite night of the week. I can't wait to see you again next week, Brianna. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time.